Buongiorno e benvenuti. My name is Giovanna and I welcome all my friends to Kitchen on the Cliff. Today we're going to make something that's very delicious that everybody loves when they go to Italy. Risotto. It's delicious, everybody loves it, and rather easy to make. The risotto will be the classic risotto la milanese con funghi. Risotto in the style of Milan with mushrooms. The recipe for risotto will be found in the cooking of Emilia Romagna. But, of course, everybody will get the recipe right in our video. The ingredients for risotto are simple. They are onion, saffron, mushrooms, wine, rice, chicken broth, butter, salt, and grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Grate it fresh, please. Don't buy it already grated. You can buy it already grated in an Italian deli because you know that it's fresh. But don't buy it at the supermarket because uh, it has to be freshly grated to get the most of the fragrance and the taste of this king of cheeses. We made the chicken broth yesterday so that it would be cooled and refrigerated overnight. Now, if you want to use the chicken broth immediately after you make it, I show in the video devoted to uh, chicken broths how to use a chicken broth immediately if you need to. But it's easier if you make it the day before, you put it in the refrigerator and look at what happens. The fat of the chicken broth solidifies. At that point, you simply take it out. See, you don't have to guess. Now, this fat can be used, of course. If you've ever had potatoes fried in fat and chicken fat, it's our parents' generation. That's what they used to do. Nothing got thrown away, and this is perfectly good, good fat. All right, let's get started. We'll begin with the onion. This is a Vidalia onion. It's my favorite because it's very sweet and I use it for just about everything. Because uh, they used to be available seasonally, but now you could buy Vidalia onions any place. So we need only half. Vidalia onions tend to be very big. All right, I'm going to slice the onion. And now I'm going to cut it in the other direction. Now when you get to this point, make it easy for yourself and just turn it. And do the same thing again. Of course, since you've already sliced it in one direction, when you slice it in the other direction, it gives you tiny pieces. Remember the bench scraper? How useful it is for everything? So here, I'm picking up the onions and putting them into a container. Best tool in the kitchen. So since this risotto has mushrooms, we're not going to use a porcini that, that's in the book recipe because we have fresh much, mushrooms, so that's what we're using. So we're going to take these lovely mushrooms, take the stem off and save it for the next time you make uh, broth. You know, if you don't plan to make broth very quickly, put them in the freezer. But this is what you add to the broth to make it flavorful. So these will save for when we make soup. These are the mushrooms. This was my job when I was growing up. My job was to chop the mushrooms. That may sound easy, but you know, to satisfy my father, the mushrooms had to be as small as the rice. And I'll show you how to achieve that. So right now I'm just cutting them coarsely. I started doing this when I was 10 years old. So that's when I started cooking, I guess. My father was a wonderful cook. My grandmother's helper was her son, Felice, my, my father. And so, because of that, he learned how to cook. Now, this may seem like a lot of mushrooms, but you know, mushrooms cook down to nothing, so you need a, a goodly amount. So, once you've done that, now we chop them. Bring them back to the center of your cutting board, and you continue until you have very fine chop. You know, I'm doing this in real time, so if it seems like a daunting task, it isn't. Uh, it takes very little time, really. 
you know, because the mushrooms have no veins, you, you can chop them as finely as you want, very, very simply. I know that we all have gadgets for chopping uh, things, uh, ingredients, but I, I prefer chopping by hand because you can control it better. Uh, what I object to in using a machine to chop things is that sometimes if you're not careful, you end up with a mush. You don't want that. You want pieces of the ingredients. And when you think you're finished, do a little bit more just for good measure. We begin by taking the broth and putting it in a pan. This is two quarts of chicken broth, which means eight cups. Going to take this pan, this pot, put it in the back burner, turn the gas on, and let it come to a boil. While the broth is coming to the boil, this is six tablespoons of butter, and I'm going to take half of it, put it into the pot. This is divided, this is going to be used at the end. We turn the gas on. Melt the butter until it's bubbly. We have the heat on high because we want to saute the onion quickly over high heat. As soon as the butter is melted and bubbly, we're going to add the onions. We don't want the onions to brown, we just want them to soften. Just when you see the edges of the onion beginning to color, we add the mushrooms. Here are our mushrooms. At this point, we begin to salt. We add a little bit of salt to get that flavor into the mushrooms. You see that volume of mushrooms, how it cooked down? That's normal. Now we add two cups of rice. Okay, one cup, two cups. And now we stir to let the rice absorb the butter and the onion and the, the juices that have uh, come out of the vegetables. We're glazing the rice. This is a classic, but there are many variations that you can use. I, I must say that I like this best. There's nothing that's, <laughs> that's better than risotto con funghi. I'm adding a pinch of, what is this called again? Saffron. This is our saffron. I'm going to add half a teaspoon to the broth. Now we add the wine. Half a cup. Of course, you don't buy cooking wine, ever. You use whatever wine you drink. So now I'm starting to stir. There's nothing sticking to the bottom. So as soon as it dries, and you see that it's beginning to stick ever so slightly, you start adding the broth. Now we're going to turn this to medium-low. So as soon as you see that it's absorbed the broth, you add more. So as a general rule, you need twice as much broth as you need rice. So this is two cups of rice, and we're going to use up eight cups of broth. As you are stirring, if you don't see any liquid, you add more. But the stirring has to be continuous because this sticks very quickly. You add it gradually because the, the rice has to absorb it gradually so that eventually it'll, it'll bloom and it'll make a very creamy risotto. We're halfway done and you could already see that the rice has grown. We started out <laughs> with like one quarter of this uh, Dutch oven, and now we're certainly one third uh, the volume. Always stir the whole bottom. Don't forget any corners. Of course, there are no corners in this, but don't forget any area of the pot. Make sure that you scrape the sides of the pot always. No rice kernels, because if those rice kernels go back into the risotto, you will have hard pieces, you don't want that. We always remember when one time we invited my cousin Joe. 
So Joe arrived, he was so excited that we were going to have risotto because he had just discovered it, he had just been to Italy. Oh, we're gonna have risotto. The next person that arrived was Phyllis, it was just the two of them. Oh, what are we having for dinner? I said, uh, risotto. Oh, wow, how long does it take? When are we gonna eat? I said, in about 45 minutes. 45 minutes? I'm supposed to wait 45 minutes and then all I get is rice? She, she, you know, she didn't know what risotto was. Uh, why do you have to wait 45 minutes to eat it? Of course, the next question would have been, why didn't you already make it before we arrived? Because you can't. Risotto can't wait. You, you have to serve it immediately after you cook it, and you just, you can't do it ahead. There's no part of it that you can do ahead. I mean, you can chop the vegetables ahead, but aside from that, there's really nothing else you can do ahead. This is labor intensive. Yes, that's why it's so expensive when you order it. Because there's no part of it that you can do ahead. It has to be done to order. So the rice, you know, the starch in the rice goes to the broth and thickens it. And you get that wonderful silken feel in your mouth. When my brother Carmelo and I were growing up in the Bronx, we had all the holidays with two families the Biazzo family and the Donzella family. We lived near each other. We lived in, in an apartment building in the Bronx and we were very, very close friends. And so when the holidays came, everybody would call my father and say, Felice, would you please make risotto? Nobody in the group would be able to make risotto for almost two dozen people. Uh, because as you can see, you have to stir it for you know, uh, half an hour to 45 minutes. And so he would be the one who would make risotto and everybody would be thrilled because none of them made it at home. So then for these dinners, I was the oldest child, the oldest cousin. And so the children were at a separate table and I was always in charge of the children. And eventually I began to be resentful of that. I wanted to sit with the adults. But I'm not sure whether I ever graduated to sitting with the adults. <laughs> Risotto always brings me back to that memory. Of course, you won't find risotto in my Sicilian feast because, you know, Italian cooking is regional and risotto is grown in the north. It's grown in the Po Valley. You know, Liguria, uh, Piemonte, Lombardia, Veneto. This and polenta. Polenta is also a northern food because that's where it's grown. Leave a comment if you would like me to make polenta. You will find it in my Emilia Romagna cookbook. If you look at the risotto now, it has a liquid on top. So you could serve it two ways. This is called a londa, which means it has a wave. It's a little looser. It's not soup, but it's a little looser. So you can serve it this way, a londa, or you could serve it a little drier. You see the bubbles? You could see the bubbles on the surface. You could see that there's liquid there, right? Some people like it like this, but we like it a little bit drier. So I'm going to cook it another few minutes. At this point, be very careful to really stir and really get to the bottom because you, you don't want it to stick. This will serve six to eight people. The risotto is now finished. We're going to turn the gas off and we're going to do what is called mantecare. This is three tablespoons of butter and we're going to put about three quarters of a cup of grated parmigiano and stir. This is done without fire. We're, we don't want to cook the butter. I'm still on the stove, but there's no heat. This is mantecare to work in the butter and the cheese. You want both to melt, but not to cook. Okay, we're ready to serve. And know that risotto waits for no man. When it's ready, you have to be ready to eat it and to enjoy it. Now you've learned how to make risotto. I hope that you make it. And if you do make it, I'm sure you will make it often because it is really an absolutely delicious uh, dish. It's Italian comfort food, particularly good in cold weather. Yes, day like today. A sunny day in New York, but very cold. So this, is, this will stick to your ribs. The recipe is in my book, The Cooking of Emilia Romagna, and it is also in the description box. Thank you for watching. Make risotto once and you will make it very often because it is absolutely delicious. 
and everybody will be grateful to you for all the work. Now there's a technique for eating very hot risotto. As you can see, this is very hot. So fork or spoon, first of all, whatever you like. You like to eat with a spoon, eat it with a spoon. If you like a fork, eat it with a fork. But this is what you do. You spread it to the edges of the dish so you have more area and it'll cool faster. And then once you've done that, you begin to work your way the edge of the plate all around. Mm. So what do you think? I don't want to take the words out of your mouth. This is something for which you, you bring nothing else to the table. Uh, no cheese. It doesn't require any more cheese. It's already in there. It doesn't require butter. It's already in there. Allora cari amici, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends. Alla prossima volta. Ciao. 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 <laughs>